Hi, I'm Justin Kay, Field Specialist in Horticulture for University of Missouri Extension. I'm going to talk today about nitrogen fixing cover crops for vegetable production. It's important to start off any discussion about nitrogen fixation with an explanation of rhizobium bacteria in symbiosis. Atmospheric nitrogen is abundant, but most plants cannot access this form of nitrogen. Rhizobium bacteria, however, exists in a mutually beneficial relationship with plants. These soil dwelling bacteria infect the roots of legume plants, and when infection occurs, a nitrogen fixing gene is activated in the bacteria. Bacteria feed on sugars from root exudates and fix atmospheric nitrogen for the plants to utilize for growth. Why use cover crops for nitrogen? Cover crops can be used in addition to compost and manure, boosting nitrogen values while reducing total manure applications. It has been shown that continued use of manure and compost on vegetable farms can build up phosphorus and potassium to excess levels, impeding the continued application of manure to satisfy the demands of crops. Cover crops can improve soil structure and texture with dense root mats in a way that compost and manure cannot. Cover crops can be used to build soil organic matter and increase nitrogen levels in the soil. Unlike manures, and other biological soil amendments of animal origin, cover crops pose no food safety risk and have no planting restrictions following incorporation or termination. There's a wide variety of nitrogen fixing cover crops. They're often categorized on their life cycle or their season of planting. There's a wide variety of winter annual cover crops that can be planted in the fall and terminated the following spring. There are also perennial and biennial cover crops, which can be planted for a number of seasons or terminated like an annual cover crop. We also have summer annual cover crops like cow peas and some hemp that fit great into a summer fallow period. In the first year after termination, cover crops release approximately half of their total available nitrogen. It's important to inoculate cover crops with the appropriate species of rhizobium. Different cover crops require different inoculants in rhizobium species. Wet the seed and mix with the dry inoculant powder prior to planting. Mineralization is the process by which microorganisms consume and excrete waste into inorganic forms. In plant tissues, nitrogen exists in many different organic molecules and structures containing carbon. Plants absorb nitrogen and other nutrients from their roots in the inorganic form. Plants uptake nitrogen from the soil in the form of ammonium and nitrate. Recent studies have shown plants' ability to absorb nitrogen in an organic form of amino acids. This is thought to comprise only a small amount of the total nitrogen. Cover crops must be broken down and consumed by bacteria and fungi and other soil organisms for their nutrients to be released. Nitrogen from cover crops is not immediately available. It's important to note that particle size matters. Flail mode cover crops that produce a well chopped residue will release nitrogen more quickly than non mode or sickle bar mode cover crops, which leave the cover crop residue mostly intact. Incorporated cover crops will release nitrogen more quickly than lows left on the soil surface. Weather and soil temperatures also influence nitrogen and nutrient release. Soil microorganisms are more active in warmer temperatures and higher moisture levels, whereas cooler weather and drier conditions slow microbial activity. Cover crop maturity does impact the plant available nitrogen contribution. For maximum plant available nitrogen contribution, cover crops especially legumes, should be terminated at bud stage prior to seed set. PAN decreases during seed set and cover crop maturity. Assessing cover crop morphology or stage of growth on an ongoing basis is necessary to time termination appropriately for maximum nitrogen contribution. We can see from this graph below, the green line on the top represents plant available nitrogen in a legume cover crop. Plant available nitrogen becomes available at its maximum amount during the bud stage of legume plant growth. Studies from New Hampshire suggest placing black silage tarps on determinated cover crop residue increases the rate of nutrient release. 
cash crop yields increased across black tarp treatments an average of 58% compared to cover crops with no tarps placed on top. Studies from Wisconsin have shown black tarps to be an effective way to terminate cover crops with all cover crops being killed with no regrowth at a maximum of 21 days. Tarps are increasingly being used to terminate cover crops and facilitate no-till planting of vegetables. We can also reduce fertilizer usage and increase yields with cover crops. Studies in Maryland have shown that a tomato crop grown in black plastic mulch had a higher nitrogen requirement and a greater penalty for elimination of nitrogen than those grown in a hairy vetch cover crop mulch. With half of the nitrogen fertilizer as that applied to black plastic mulch plots, tomatoes in a hairy vetch plot consistently produce significantly higher yields across 10 different tomato varieties. It's also important to note that the price of nitrogen gained from cover crops is lower per acre than most available fertilizer materials. Questions are always asked about the advantages and benefits of cover crops versus compost. Using mulch, compost, and cover crops are all great ways to increase organic matter in soils and stimulate soil microbiology. Cover crops, however, provide sugars to microorganisms through root exudates and deeper profiles of the soil. This feeds the soil food web during cover crop growth and death. Cover crop roots can also work to penetrate a hard pan or till pan in soils. When cover crop roots decay, they leave behind channels for water infiltration, tunnels for earthworms and other microorganisms, as well as plant available nutrients. Fresh cover crop residue provides different food sources for the soil food web than mature aged compost. This is a picture of the soil food web from the soil biology primer. This shows that living plants and the root exudates as well as their tissues feed soil microorganisms at the base of the soil food web. Bacteria and fungi feed on these root exudates and plant tissue and are then consumed by higher level microorganisms. All along this soil food web, as organisms are consumed and waste is excreted, nitrate and ammonium become available to the cash crop. If you're thinking about getting started with cover crops, I encourage you to download a free version of SARE's Managing Cover Crops Profitably. It's a very comprehensive resource with tons of information about cover crops. As with any change to the farm, start small. Don't plant the entire farm at once. It's always important to inoculate appropriately prepare the seed bed and cover the seed if possible. Cover crops will not thrive and establish in a weedy field. Seed bread preparation is critical to cover crop establishment. You also will want to think about how you will terminate the cover crop and whether the cover crop will be frost killed or winter killed or survive through the next spring and require physical termination. Plan out what cash crops will follow and how the cover crop residue will be managed to facilitate planting. Recognize that supplemental nitrogen will likely be necessary during colder weather in times of maximum crop growth. 